The history and science of the bathroom. The privacy, comfort, and cleanliness that we associate with our bathrooms today are the result of thousands of years of civil engineering and social change. Humans have always needed a way to go to the toilet. It is a necessary function of our biology. Bathing was always needed as well. It took centuries to bring these two important functions together into one convenient room. In ancient cultures, toilets and bathing weren't necessarily performed all in the same room. In many societies, the toilet was a function performed far away from the home. In ancient Egypt, rich people had bathrooms and toilets in their homes. Toilet seats were made of limestone. Poor people made do with a wooden stool with a hole in it. Underneath was a container filled with sand, which had to be emptied by hand. The ancient Romans built sewers to collect rainwater and sewage. Wealthy people had their own toilets, but Romans also built public lavatories. In them there was no privacy, just stone seats next to one another without partitions of any kind. After using the toilet, people wiped their behinds with a sponge on a stick. In the Middle Ages, Toilets were simply pits in the ground with wooden seats over them. However, in the Middle Ages, monks built stone or wooden lavatories over rivers. At Portchester Castle in the 12th century, monks built stone chutes leading to the sea. When the tide went in and out, it would flush away the sewage. In the Middle Ages, wealthy people might use rags to wipe their behinds. Ordinary people often use the soft fuzzy leaves of the mullein plant. The plague hit England seven times in 200 years and greatly impacted public opinion of bathing and cleanliness. In 1546, King Henry VIII shut down public bathhouses, blaming them for sickness. Instead of bathing to keep clean, it was believed that wearing clean clothes next to the skin would make the body clean. Instead of bathing, white linen underclothes soaking up toxins and smells became the solution of keeping the body clean. Washing these linens was labor intensive. Soap was made from water poured over ash and boiled with mutton fat and herbs. Chamber pots were used by the middle class and would have been emptied onto the street or in the river. Chamber pots were considered to be discreet and somewhat private, as a person could use them in any room they chose. Queen Elizabeth I had a carriage made for her clothes stool and chamber pot so that it could be brought with her wherever she went. In the 18th century, bathing on a regular basis was not a common practice. In Georgian London, many of the rituals that we perform in our bathrooms today were done in the bedroom. It was common for men and women to get ready in their bedrooms while socializing with their friends. The flush toilet was invented in 1596, but didn't become widespread until 1851. Before that, the toilet was a collection of communal outhouses, chamber pots and holes in the ground. In 1775, Alexander Cummings, a Scotsman, invented the S-trap for flush toilets. This device, still in use today, allowed for water to be trapped within the plumbing, preventing the escape of the smell from the sores below. The popularity of the flush toilet inside the home was creating major problems for the waste system. Many cities stunk, and the need for an advanced sewer system became important for public health. Although ancient cities like Harappa had a complex sewage system dating from 2600 BC, it took the West a long time to construct an efficient way to remove waste and smell from large growing cities. The first sewage treatment plant in America was built in 1890 in Massachusetts. 
when it became obvious that raw sewage could lead to epidemics of typhoid and cholera. Treating sewage prior to dumping it into the water system became the new way of removing waste. The late 19th century brought about advancements in technology as well as advancements in medicine. The discovery of germs and the causes for disease changed the way people thought about cleanliness and hygiene. Taking a bath with soap was now generally thought of as important for good health. In America, homes of the wealthy were being fitted with private bathrooms, bathtubs and showers. Strangely, the wealthy in England didn't see the need for plumbed hot bath water. Servants performed a laborious task of heating individual pots of water. After World War I and II, the glamour of Hollywood movies and the rise of the middle class brought certain luxuries in the bathroom. Today we see more technology entering the bathroom. Sensors for automatic lights, fancy shower heads, stereo equipment, steam-free mirrors, refrigerated medicine cabinets, and in-floor heating have certainly changed how we see the bathroom.